The average League of Legends player will spend most of their time fighting champions. The best League of Legends players will be fighting minions. By controlling the minion wave, you control where the enemy will be and better position your team for objective control, team fights, and ultimately victory. Welcome to Commanding Minion Waves, the art of wave manipulation. Before we dive into how to manipulate minion waves, let's go over the basics of minions and how they function. A minion wave consists of three melee minions and three caster minions. On top of that, every third wave before 20 minutes and every other wave after 20 minutes has a siege minion. All minions get stronger over time with increased health, damage, gold value, and experience. The specific numbers aren't very important, but you should know a few basic facts. Ranged minions do more damage, melee minions are tankier, and siege minions are a mix of both. Siege minions give the most experience, followed by melee minions, then ranged minions. And lastly, each minion can take a different number of hits. At full HP, 7 turret shots plus 1 auto attack will kill a siege minion, 2 turret shots plus 1 auto attack for a melee minion, and 1 turret shot plus 2 autos for caster minions. Now let's talk about minion behavior and minion modifiers. Minion behavior is pretty basic. They walk along a set path and lane until they find an enemy unit. When they find that enemy, there's a priority target system that is checked every 0.25 seconds. The rule system is a little lengthy, but you can check it out here. For the most part, minions march down the lanes and attack enemy minions that get in their way. They'll prioritize you if you auto attack their champions, but will ignore untargeted spell damage. But as of patch 8.2, single target spells like Castanet's Q or Pantheon Spear will now trigger minion aggro too. Drawing aggro with these spells could turn a winning trade into a losing trade, as each caster can do roughly 10 damage per second. There are also some external modifiers that can change minion behavior, like this one. TLDR, taking more towers than your opponent and having a higher average team level makes your minions hit enemy minions harder and take less minion damage in return. Then there's the Baron buff, which gives minions extra health, resistance, range, movement speed, and damage. They also get huge resistances to area of effect damage, and Baron buffed cannon minions can even attack from outside a turret's range. All in all, Baron up minions greatly increase your team's ability to push, take objectives, and even crack the enemy base. Now let's get on to wave management. There are three major types of wave manipulation you can use to create map pressure. Freezing, slow pushing, and fast pushing. Sometimes you'll need to hold your wave in place by freezing it. In this clip, Orianna keeps the enemy minions alive as long as possible, only attacking to hit at the last second. This causes Orianna's minions to die faster than Fizz's, ensuring her wave doesn't push forward. Now, Fizz is forced to overextend for creeps, and Orianna can position aggressively to zone him away, provided she has wards or information on the position of the enemy jungler. A good freeze like this can deny the enemy laner significant gold and experience. It can also draw the enemy jungler to your lane to help push the wave and break the freeze. This pressure allows your jungler to make plays elsewhere on the map, and in the best case, you may even get a kill on an overextended enemy, especially if you coordinate with your jungler. The best times to freeze are when you're being pressured by the enemy jungler, making it too dangerous for you to overextend, if you want to deny as much experience and gold as you can from the enemy laner while staying relatively safe, to farm up while you're slightly behind and there are no roaming opportunities, or finally, if your opponent bases and their wave is pushing to you. Before you base, freeze the lane instead of pushing to deny more experience and gold. Though you can use them in all these scenarios, freezes are most effective when you're ahead and can use your zoning power to snowball leads. It's more difficult to freeze when you're behind because your opponent can just engage on you, and since they'll have a buildup of minions, you'll be way behind in damage. How long you can keep your freeze depends on the number of caster minions that the enemy creep wave has. As a rule, look at the number of full HP caster minions and subtract one to get the amount of minion waves until your minions uncontrollably start to push again. Keep in mind, it's hard to freeze a cannon wave as the cannon targeting is a bit RNG. If your cannon decides to clear lower health minions, you'll just end up auto pushing. The last thing to remember is that if the enemy wave has over four casters in your head, you can prevent the enemy laner from playing the game entirely by zoning just ahead of caster aggro range. Now let's move on to slow pushing. In the simplest scenario, slow pushing is just killing caster minions so that the enemy wave will do a lot less damage to your wave. This gives you time to build up a large wave of your own. There may be more complex scenarios in which the enemy wave is larger than yours, and in these cases, you'll have to kill a bit more than the caster minions. In this clip, you can see how large a minion wave you can amass if you leave enemy tank minions alive and keep the lane untouched. We call this a slow push in reference to the total time that the wave will take to reach the enemy turret. That means you will have tower pressure, but not for a little while. 
Slow pushes are a good way to set up future pressure in lane. It gives your team room to rotate and get objectives while the enemy team catches it. If the enemy team chooses to match your rotation, they'll be sacrificing a huge amount of experience and gold. That said, this window of opportunity doesn't last long, so make sure to be decisive in your movements after setting up the push. The optimal uses of a slow push usually come down to setting up a play across the map for an objective, denying massive amounts of experience or gold by threatening a dive in other lanes, buying time to base, roam, or ward, and finally, to harass or siege structures. Finally, let's move on to fast pushing. To create a fast push, you need to do the opposite of a slow push. Instead of killing the caster minions, you'll attack melee minions, and then you can leave the wave alone. This will allow your wave to clear through the enemy minions faster, creating a large wave pushing very quickly. This lets your wave clear through the enemy minions faster, creating a large wave pushing very quickly. Most of the time, you'll want to use a fast push to force the enemy laner to stay in lane and clear so that you can base or roam. You can also use it when you're looking to dive with your jungler, letting the minions tank the initial engage, when the enemy laner is across the map and you have the opportunity to deny EXP or damaged tower, or when you need to get vision further down in the lane to either set up for objective plays or stop someone like Twisted Fate from roaming. Fast pushing is especially great at pressuring enemy laners who recall or stay in lane on low resources. It gives you the opportunity to punish their mistakes and is easier to execute than a slow push. That said, be wary of potential ganks as fast pushing typically places you more forward into enemy territory. Keep in mind that pushing changes a little bit in every lane. In mid lane, it's harder to have effective freezes because the lane is shorter and new waves of minions show up too quickly to build pressure. On top of that, most mid lane champions have ranged abilities to help break freezes and junglers can more easily come around to help. Furthermore, most mid laners can't effectively hold waves due to the lack of health or armor. As a mid laner, most of your wave manipulation will be used to minimize farm loss while you leave lane to ward or gank. You can use a slow push to buy yourself a long period of pressure, which lets you get deeper wards and roam farther. You can also use a fast push to get shallow wards while pressuring the enemy to stay in lane. Side waves are longer and so easier to freeze. It takes 25 seconds for a wave to hit the allied outer turrets and 30 seconds to reach the exact center of the lane. That gives you plenty of time to build bigger minion waves, which means more zoning and gank denial. Fighting in a huge enemy minion wave early game would be devastating for your opponent. If you're a top laner, try freezing a wave, then building a slow push and calling in your jungler for a dive. You'll deny a large amount of experience in gold and possibly kill the enemy laner right when the pressure turns. After laning phase, rely more on slow pushes in the side lanes. You'll force the enemy to send someone to clear the wave and your team can start pressuring objectives elsewhere via numbers advantage. Wave manipulation is key to a successful game. A smart combination of freezing, slow pushing, and fast pushing will give your team control over gank threats, vision, and even enemy rotations. For more command attack and poppy tutorials, stay tuned to Blitz.